It's championship weekend for County Line, Greenwood, and Lamar, all of whom punched their tickets to Hot Springs this past Saturday. I'm Leland Barclay, and it's my privilege to host the River Valley Sports Report, where we highlight River Valley schools and athletes. The Greenwood Lady Bulldogs, Lamar Lady Warriors, and County Line Indians have been ranked at the top or near the top of their classifications all basketball season. Last week, they earned the opportunity to play for state championships at Bank OZK Arena at the Hot Springs Convention Center. The Lady Bulldogs opened the Class 5A state tournament with a tough win over Nettleton, slipped past Little Rock Parkview by two points, and then beat West Memphis 68-57 in the semifinals on Saturday. Thursday night at 6 p.m., Greenwood will play Valonia for the state championship. The Lady Bulldogs have won six state championships, all under Coach Clay Reeves, who also won three state titles at Greenland, before taking over at Greenwood. Greenwood and Valonia are former conference foes before this season when Valonia was placed into the 5A Central. The Greenwood Lady Bulldogs have now won 43 straight conference games. The last team to beat them in a conference game was Valonia five years ago. The Lamar Lady Warriors have persevered through the death of a teammate this season and a season ending injury to their top scorer and still defeated Melbourne, Helena West Helena, and Bergman in the state tournament. Harold McIlvain was in Lamar all week and covered the Lady Warriors' run. Lamar will play Salem on Saturday night at 6 p.m. for the Class 3A Girls State Championship. I spent the week in Ozark, which was the site of the Class A State Tournament, which County Line hosted. The Indians were impressive in three wins in the state tournament, but it didn't start off easy. County Line had to face Bradley, which defeated the Indians in the state championship game last year. This year in the first round, though, County Line prevailed 70-47, to then defeated Clarendon 70-55, to and defeated Shirley 71-58 to on semifinals Saturday. County Line will play Mark Tree in the championship game at 745 on Friday night. County Line is currently the only team left in the state with an undefeated record. That brings us to our weekly segment, Gimme Five. These are the top five performances of the past week in the River Valley. Number one, we start with the player of the week, Carly Williams, a senior forward for the Lamar Lady Warriors. Lamar was given little chance to beat Bergman in the semifinals on Saturday. And actually, the Lady Warriors weren't even favored to beat Melbourne in the first round of the state tournament. Melbourne, if you remember, went 43-0 last year and were again highly touted this year, while Lamar was merely the third seed from its regional tournament. Lamar prevailed in that one 47-43, then down McGee 54-36 in the second round. On Saturday, Williams scored eight points in the fourth quarter and finished with 15 points, five rebounds, three steals, and two assists, to lead Lamar to a 41-39 win over Bar Bergman and into the championship game. Number two, the Greenwood Lady Bulldogs dynamic duo of Maddie Cartwright and Anna Trusty combined to score 50 points on semifinal Saturday to lead Greenwood to a 68-57 win over West Memphis and into the championship game. Number three, County Line scored 45 points in the middle two quarters on semifinal Saturday to beat Shirley 71 to 58. Andre Milam scored 24 points. Trent Johnston added 17 and Cooper Watson 12 in the win. We talked with County Line head coach Joe Brunson, Milam, a senior forward, and senior guard Kelby Rudd after Saturday's win. That was the goal for the year, so to be able to do it is it's really enjoyable. Uh, defensively tonight, you know, seeing them surely play a couple of times was kind of the goal to really get out on them and force them uh, kind of away from the threes. Well, we wanted to get to their shooters. We knew that all four of them were capable of shooting the ball, but at the same time, number 34, their post player inside, that guy can play. So they really stretched us. There was a lot of things that we were, we were trying to cover. You had a big stretch 
11-0 um, stretch in the third quarter. Was that kind of, do you think, the key stretch of the game? We had a couple stretches. We had a stretch there. We had a stretch earlier in the second quarter where we were able to build a little bit of a lead. But, yeah, we, we had a couple of runs. Well, it's great. It's always a fun experience to go play in the gym with all the people. Tell me about that third quarter. How, uh, boy, you were feeling it in that quarter, wasn't you? I was, I was feeling it, yeah. Did you guys as a team kind of feel like that quarter was the quarter you, you could put the game away? Yeah, I mean, we just moved the ball really well and fed the post. It's just really exciting. Glad I got to do it with all my teammates, all the hard work we put in, all the hours in the gym. Has this kind of been a, um, a motivating factor for you guys all season long? Yes, sir. That's always been the goal. Go back, win it this time. Uh, tonight's game, boy, it was close for a while. What was kind of the key for you guys pulling away? We knew we had the size mismatch inside, and we knew if we could just get it down there, work it inside, finish it, go strong, it'd be fine. Number four, the defending Class 2A state champion Lavaca Golden Arrows lost in the second round of the state tournament on Thursday to host Rector after a first round win over Sloan Hendricks 58-56 in overtime. Lavaca finished 32-5 and, and in the state's Elite Eight, which is quite an accomplishment after losing four seniors off that championship team from last season. Number five, the Mansfield Lady Tigers made it all the way to semifinals Saturday before falling to Mount Vernon Enola. Mansfield beat England 62-38 in the first round of the Class 2A state tournament and then beat Fordyce 53-39 in the second round. Also, congratulations to the Charleston Tigers, who were conference, district, and regional champions and won a first-round Class 3A state tournament game, beating Haskell Harmony Grove 40-39 to before losing to Manila in the second round. And to the Northside Grizzlies, Northside Lady Bears, Van Buren Pointers, and Johnson County Westside Rebels, who all earned their way into the state tournaments. Also, congratulations to the Howe Lady Lions, Pecola Indians, and Roland Rangers who are in their state tournaments this week in Oklahoma. To keep up with all the basketball, wrestling, track, baseball, softball, and soccer action, you definitely want to check out every day of the Northwest Arkansas and River Valley Democrat Gazette where you will get Players of the Week, rankings, scores, and notes for the most comprehensive basketball coverage in the state especially for the state championship games in the next few days. You'll also want to pick up the Sunday River Valley Democrat Gazette, available all across the River Valley, including Eastern Oklahoma at Walgreens, Harps, Come and Go, and Casey's. Last Sunday, Harold wrote about Lamar's Ashlyn Barnes, the teammate who passed away in a car accident following a game earlier this season. You can subscribe online at the River Valley Democrat Gazette.com slash subscribe or by calling our customer service line at 479-684-5509. Be sure to follow the River Valley Democrat Gazette Twitter account as well as mine, Walter Woody's, and Harold's. You can view and purchase photos from our award-winning Arkansas Democrat Gazette photographers that can be seen and purchased on our website, nwaonline.com slash photo. Thank you for watching. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. We're going to wrap up this week's River Valley Sports Report with videos from Van Buren and the regular season win over Russellville, which lifted the pointers to the state tournament, and also from Ozark, where County Line defeated Bradley in the first round of the Class A state tournament. God bless you, and we'll see you next week.